You are going to have some mercy by the blood. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin in us, we lie. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Let your blood wash away my sin. Anything that will not allow me to go back with my blessings today, by your blood, wipe them away. Begin to pray. Pray for God to have mercy on you. Anything that will not allow God to have mercy on you, that will make you to come here and just fulfill all righteousness and go. That the Lord will have mercy. Father, have mercy upon me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Anything that will make me to come here and go back home the same way. Please have mercy by your blood. Cleanse me. Have mercy on your church, Lord. Have mercy on your church, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You are going to ask God. You are going to say, Father, speak your word into my life and give me a positive turn around. Begin to pray. I don't know that thing that you want God to speak his word into. Your business, your career, your ministry. You want a positive turn around. Tell God, speak your word into my situation today, into my life today. I want a positive turnaround. Father, speak your word into my life today. Speak your word into my situation today. And give me a positive turnaround. And give me a positive turnaround. Speak your word, O oh Lord, into my life, into my situation, into my business, into my career, into my ministry, into my home. And give me a positive turnaround. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, give me a positive turn around. Say, Ke baro bo shede agaga agaga. Naraka sendi di mama mama robo bo bo. Maraka sendi a mama ba. Deraka sendi di mama mama ba. I want a positive turn around in every situation of my life that my coming here will not be in vain. Give me a positive turn around. Give me a positive turn around. Give me a positive turn around in every situation of my life in my business. In my ministry, in my career, in my home, concerning my finances, give me a positive turn around. I don't know how you are going to do it, but I know you will do much more than heaven has got think according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Father Almighty, but because I'm here this evening, give me a positive turn around. Speak your word into my life and give me a positive turn around. Speak your word into my situation and give me a positive turn around. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You are going to say, Father, my Father, every power assigned to turn my glory to shame, scatter by fire, scatter by fire. There are some power that has been assigned to turn your glory to shame. If you don't pray now, they will turn it and there's nothing that will happen. Because they have been assigned, they have been dedicated, they have been sent. As agents on assignment to turn your glory to shame, begin to pray. Father, every power that has been assigned to turn my glory to shame, scatter them by fire. Ah, you say in gathering they will surely gather. But if their gathering is not of you, they shall surely scatter for your sake. They shall surely scatter for my sake. Every gathering, every manipulation, every gathering of satanic forces that want to turn my glory to shame, scatter them by fire, 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 scatter them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Some of you may say, eh, where is the glory? Ah, hey, you don't know anything. Your case is better than some people. Say, hey, where is the glory? Which glory are they going to turn to shame? Is it not shame already? Ah, you've not seen shame. If you, know, if, if you have seen shame, you will not be here this evening. Oh. Some people's case are worse than your own. So you better pray so that you will not go below this level you are already. Because there are some power. They have gathered themselves together. And they say, hey, this one. Oh, she she bereni. You have just started. You will sell that house. You will sell that car. In fact, you will almost sell your clothes. Sell. Those are powers. You've not started selling your clothes to eat now. God will not allow you to see it in Jesus' name. So when I say pray, pray that your glory will not turn to shame, you still have clothes on your body. <laughs> you have not started selling your clothes to eat. You may say, ah, has it reached that level? Go and ask people that are going through. Praise the Lord. So better pray so that you will not pray. You are going to say, Father, 
Father, let me never say that words that will offend you in my life. You won't understand. Let me take it again. Some people, why they are going through what they are going through is because they have said words that offended God. If I say this testimony now, it looks like a testimony. There was a time somebody lied against me and I could not defend myself. And they called me and they asked me a question. What happened between you and this person? I, I know that if I say anything, nobody would believe me because there was nobody there. I only said, I leave my judgment to God. <laughs> the person went, in fact, everybody forgot it, and the person got married and left. What did I say? Don't marry this person from abroad because we don't understand them. I only said that. that why didn't you tell me before you go ahead to arrange the wedding? She said, I said the wedding will not hold. She said so many things against me. And you know how brethren in church, we take such things. Ah! You call yourself pastor's wife. You don't want her to marry. I went for the wedding. You know the wedding they used to put uh, somebody else, a broad man. He wants to marry big. Be but because the, the Bible says that, uh, is it Bible or people that say that? Your character will find you out. Her character find out. She was living with mother-in-law and she went and reported the mother-in-law to one uncle, their uncle. The grandmother-in-law called the mother, the son abroad and said, Oh, Iriyahu. You have not seen wife. This one that has started reporting me, what she did to me, she did it to her mother-in-law. I didn't pray a single prayer. I only say I leave you for God because I cannot defend myself. I left God to defend me. <laughs> That's why I say don't say what that will offend God. The people that gathered together to support her at that time because they, like two people, apology to ministers, they were ministers. They sat me down. I was looking at them. They went down to zero level. 15 years, they have not stopped. I'm not boasting. That's why I want you to pray this prayer with seriousness. Because some of us have used our mouth to put ourselves in jail. It may not happen now. For two years, I do not see that lady. After I, When I saw her two years later, she was like my grandmother. See, today, the man called her and said, you say you are a Christian. You are not a Christian. The man went ahead and married another woman abroad. See, today, I don't know that she's married. She has become minister in Redeem, but she is not married. I even saw her. I wanted to take her to that Gio. Do you know that when somebody wants to beg, instead of her to come and apologize to me, mommy, I did wrong. She now, we were invited her. She now carried one kettle and bought it. I said, mommy, I bought it for you. Pray for me. I saw one man came in, one pastor came. I said, please pray for this, your daughter. I didn't pray for her. Because if she offends, she should come back. Some people have used their mouth. I'm not even talking about her. Because her case, I didn't pray. I only said I leave it for God. But those people that use their own mouth to cause trouble for themselves. Hey, it's only God that started delivering them from now. 15 years later. 15 years. Even the lady, she's not married. The man went ahead and married another person. And, see, and she never see the man. When you are telling people, stop what you are doing they will be using mouth to blaspheme God. You are going to say, Father, Father. It, <laughs> that story looks stupid, Abby, but it happened to me. Say, Father, Father, let me never say words that will offend you. And if I have said any, please have mercy on me. Ask God for mercy. Because some of us, we have advocated for people we do not know. We have said things that make God angry and we will be suffering. We'll be going through issues. We don't even know where it's coming from. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy because he said, I am with you. If God is with you, you cannot be cursed. But if you have used your hand to draw God's anger, you can find yourself in trouble. Just ask for God for mercy. You may not know why I keep on asking for mercy. Every time I call, I will say, ask for mercy. I know what I have seen before. I know what has happened before. That people have used their mouth and their hand to curse. Pray for mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In any way, I've used my mouth to offend you, to cause problem for myself. Please have mercy on me. Father, have mercy on me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You are going to say, Father, every word that has been spoken against my progress and my glory, let it be destroyed. 
begin to pray. The one you are spoken that God is angry with, we have settled that one. But there are some people that have spoken words against your progress and your glory. Where are you going? They have tied you to the, you, you think you are moving anywhere. They have tied you spiritually with rope to a tree. You can only move a little. You cannot move far. Someday we will tie you to the extent that you cannot move. Pray that God should destroy every spoken words that has been spoken against my progress. Father, let it be destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You are going to pray. But I'm sure there are some of us here. They have been tied spiritually to a tree. You know, there was a time when we were in Mo, but I did. We were in camp and I was praying because the church refused to grow that time when we first came. The church, people used to wear bedroom slippers to church and singlets. That's what even women we wear to church. And it's papa. You know, mats, that's what they used to use the do the. We have been praying and praying. No church that we enter that village will survive. No redeemed church. All the pastors, they used to run away. In fact, no church. If you come to church today, by next Sunday, they will not come again. And when we go and ask, why are they not coming to church? That's before I became a pastor's wife, the former church, because I live there too. They will gather their group, their village elders, and put you in between. What did you go and do in redeemed church? By next Sunday, that person will not come again. That was the place they now transferred me and my husband to. Because I already know the story of the place. We started praying. We started building. We could not build. Do you know what God showed me? I saw a dog tied to the middle of the pole of the church. And the dog started drying up. Started drying up. Started drying up. In camp. I was praying in the camp. I said, eh? This is the situation of our church. They tied the dog and the dog started dry. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Set yourself free and begin to prosper. Set your friends free and begin to move forward. Father, every rope that I've been tied to spiritually. Father, break every rope. In any way I've been tied spiritually to any rope. Is any way I've been tied down with any chain or fetter. Father, set me free, O Lord. Set me free, O oh Lord. Set me free, O oh Lord. Deliver me. Let me move forward. Let me move forward. Let me move forward. In the name of Jesus. Set us free, Lord. Set us free, Lord. Set us free, Lord. Set us free, Lord. Miracle send the mama maro bo bo bo. Everyone that is represented here today that has been tied to any place, any tree, anywhere they have been tied. Father, set them free. Father, set them free. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Finally, you are going to say, Father, speak your word into my condition and let me have a positive change let me have a good change let me change for good let my situation change for good begin to pray has God to speak his word into your situation that your situation will change for good father speak your word into my situation Lord let my world let my situation change for good let my situation change for good let my situation change for good. In the name of Jesus. Situation change for good. Let my situation change for good. In the name of Jesus. Let my situation change for good. Speak your word today into my matter, my situation, and let it change for good. Let it turn around for good. In the name of Jesus. Kopo Kabaro bobo seria mama maro bobo bobo seria gaya nera kaka kamaro bobo bobo seria mama ma. Let my situation change for good. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too committed to disappoint me. I've come to realize. You that you are too faithful, faithful to fail, fail me. me. You are too faithful to fail me. 
You are too committed to disappoint me. I've come to yourself in my life. Okay. And I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. God is too faithful to fail us. He's too committed to disappoint us. Father Almighty, we thank you because you are too faithful to fail us. You are too committed to us to disappoint us. That's why we are here today. We are here because we have confidence in you. We believe in you that you will not fail us. That you will not disappoint us. Though it looks as if it's hairy, but we are sure, we have assurance that it's for a purpose. And you will allow it to begin to manifest from now in the name of Jesus. That people that will see us from today, they will say, indeed, the Lord is with this one. The Lord is with this man. The Lord is with this woman. The Lord is with this girl. The Lord is with this boy. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you have done it for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you know the Lord is with you, shout a big hallelujah. Wave to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's with me. He's with me, oh. And he, I know he will be with you. So shall he be in Jesus' name. Let's please have our seats very short. I want to just give a short exhortation. And my short exhortation is based on, I am with you in pain and in happiness. I am with you where? In pain and in happiness. Who is that person that can be with you in pain and happiness? You can tell me. Only Jesus. My people say, apology for those that will not hear you, but I will say it in your English. That if your wife disappoints you, there is no big deal. Because your brother, your blood person can disappoint you. That is life. So if people disappoint you, there's no big deal about it. Ah, I can't expect this. Do you know that if the person is not close to you, it will not be painful. Is it not true? Mm -hmm. If the person is not very close, it will not be painful. There are some people, other people will do to you. So you just brush it out. Abby, you ignore them. You brush it off because those people are not important to you. But when somebody that is close to you, very close, do something to you, how do you feel? You feel hot. You feel disappointed. You feel pained. But there's one person that I know that will be with you in pain and in happiness. That is Jesus. That's why we sang that song, You are too faithful to fail me. Though I, I missed some words. Apology to choir. It's the one I know I said, oh, Abby. The way you like, that's how you, you praise your Jesus. <laughs> so I sang it the way I understand. You understand? He's the one that can be with you in pain and in happiness. So if somebody disappoints you, especially when you are going through issues, and the person maybe was not there for you or is not there for you, don't be angry. They are not Jesus. They are not Jesus. It's only Jesus that died. Ah, you don't understand. They are not Jesus. That's why we call this one faith clinic. I want to boost your faith. Don't be angry with them. They are just human. They are just being human. They said to her is human and to forgive is divine. Praise the Lord. It is only Jesus that can be with you in pain and in happiness. He's always there for you, encouraging you. Let me tell you one secret. If you listen to man, you will miss your way. Because man will be good to you today. Tomorrow they will, they, they will, they, they will be against you. You will not be saying, ah, uh ah, -uh. is it not that person? The person I helped before, before, I used to help him. 
He used to be under me. She used to be under me. Forget that one. That is life. Life is give and take. What's the big deal about it? To point you and move forward. Look for another friend. If it's somebody you cannot, you cannot uh, put down, leave that one for God and face your life. And be happy. I used to tell people, I think when we were in Vitria, I didn't form it. I was just passing through the, uh, near the choir speaker. And I had a voice. They were singing. But what they were singing, I didn't hear. But I had a voice that said, joy is a choice. I look around me. I didn't see anybody. They were singing. The song they were singing did not have anything to do with what I heard. I heard it clearly. Joy is what? Can you please tell your neighbor, joy is a choice. Which means that nobody can make you unhappy. You choose to allow that person to make you unhappy. Or that situation to make you unhappy. I'm in pain. You are in pain because you want to be in pain. Do you know some people are going through the same situation you are going through and they are happy. And they are jumping. In fact, there are some people's situation are worse than your own, yet they are rejoicing. Ah, oh my show. If you die, people will live on with their life. Life will continue. Nobody will follow you to the grave. So don't die. Because your situation will change. It cannot be like this forever. If you die, post. And we'll go in Bobiwa. What they call those award they used to give uh, people after they are dead? Post mortem award. Post humor. Sorry. Apology. They say it's post humor award. They will not give me and you post humor award in Jesus' name. After you are gone, they will not bring the miracle. Ah! It will not be your portion. And that will it be my portion. So don't die before your time. It's only Jesus that can do what? Be with you in pain and in happiness. Let's open our Bible because I'm already over jumping. <laughs> Bible to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 and it says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became what? Poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Jesus became poor. How many people can become poor because he wants you to be rich? Carry all the money in his bank account. All his factory. All his investment and dash you and say, I want to be poor. You go and be enjoying riches. Is it possible? Uh -uh. <laughs> it's not possible. Forget. Nobody wants to suffer for anybody. But there's somebody that came down from heaven, became poor, that you might be rich. And that is Jesus Christ. So why get in pain and in happiness because it is not everybody it will be with in pain and happiness number one spend quality time with him in prayers read your bible so at the time you are wasting around lamenting complaining to people telling them your situation oh i don't want to say other things doing things that does not glorify god around what should you do spend those quality time with God. Because Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knoweth not. Which is that there are many things that you are going through that you just need to know. You just need to know what is the cause of your problem. And it will be solved very fast. Because a lot of us, we don't even know the source of our problem. That's why we are still going through them. But when you pray, you fast. You, 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 you are always in the presence of God. It's possible that God can just open your eyes to the idol of your father's house. Or somebody has nailed something somewhere. Or you did something wrong that you just need to make amends. Before you know it, you, are, you, are, you, you, you have your breakthrough. You need to spend quality time, three times with God. Time with God. Then to make Holy Spirit your comforter. Don't make man your what? Don't make man your comforter. Because John 16 verse 7, Jesus told us that I am going. He has died for us. He's now going. He has now sending, he's now sending us a comforter. He said, I will send you a comforter. Don't expect any man, any woman, or anybody to comfort you. It's only Jesus. It's only the Holy Spirit. If you make him your friend, you will see that 
when people expect you to be uh, unhappy, you will be happy because he is the one that comforts you. Do you expect any man or woman to comfort you? Pele, pele, ah, see what you are going through. Irola. Nalayo. Sometimes, apologies to say this, my husband will say, who is the person teaching you or telling you all these things? I just tell myself, I don't have friends, I don't have enemies. Jesus is my friend. Let me tell you what I do. If I'm going through one situation that is so severe and I don't know what to do, I will run inside the room. I say, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. Do you know that most of the time, the thing Holy Spirit will say I should do, oh, my father, is contrary to what my flesh wants to do. Most of the time, it's contrary to what I have prepared in my heart to do. Then I'll come out, I'll do something different. <laughs> I'll do something stupid. Then I say, oh my God, ah, Holy Spirit, ah, Holy Spirit. Boy, I will do something different. And I thought I was doing some things that were wrong. I said, Holy Spirit, sometimes some things you tell me to do, they don't look normal. But that the Jew told us, is it on first Sunday or on Sunday, that there's the wrong way, there's the right way, and there's God's way. There's what? The wrong way, the right way, and there's God's way. There's nothing, when you say something is God's way, it's neither right nor wrong. When I heard that thing, I said, ha, 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 ha. That is the truth. Because some things that God will ask you to do, it will look as if it's wrong. And some things that you would think is right to God, it is wrong. When God told uh, Saul to kill the Amalekites, both male and female, and all the small children, the sucklings, and destroy all their cattle and everything, are you going to say God is wicked? Because to me, it looks wrong. To say an entire generation should be destroyed. Kill the women, the men, the suckling. The children that are sucking breasts. Kill them. I don't want any assistance of them on the land. You will say God is wicked. Not be so. But that is God's way. It may look wicked, but that is God's way. There's God's way. There's wrong way. There's right way. That is for us. But God's way is not our ways. Finally, let me, maybe because of just one person, God wants to talk to somebody here. Before I met my husband, I was engaged to one person like that. We used to call him a pastor when we were serving and everything. And, you know, we're thinking of marriage and he now told me he wants to work in an oil company and God told me specifically, I had a dream that I should not pray for him to get a job in oil company. I said, ah, here all. Because I had a dream where I was going to work and he was taking care of a baby in the house. And I said, it's against our tradition that wife should be going to work. And I said, God, I will never, I will never do such thing. I will never allow such thing. God said, if that is the way you want it, pray. He gave me 10 days fasting and I went on. By the time I came down from the fast, I went to his house. He said, I had a dream. I said, I had a dream. The same dream, the same day, the same time. We, our house is like five bosses to each other. But you know, that was the end of the relationship. Immediately, he got, a, a month later, I just saw NLG in the newspaper. Before you know it, from one thing to the other, he was taken. Before you, he started saying, pa, 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 the relationship. In fact, the relationship after that, I'm not, I'm not sure it lasted for two months or one month after that because I disobeyed God. And that was the end of my work in oil company. Oh. Because God promised me before, me, I lost it. And you will not lose your own in Jesus' name. God's ways are not our ways. See me now. That was how I lost it. I asked God to give it to him because in that dream, I saw white people having an interview with him. He has not even seen any job. He has not written any application. And I came like this in the spirit. I said, give the job to him. They are saying, he can't say we should give him the job. One of them was saying, he was just, she was just pleading. 
not up to a month. He's just saw a newspaper. And that was how he got the job. Sir, ma, I do not hit five naira of that money. God made sure I do not hit five naira. In fact, the auntie frustrated me. The auntie just stood up and said, you cannot marry this girl. Whether they are the one behind this problem, I don't know. Me and I went to do, cost, turn myself to a deliverer. Am I Jesus? I told myself to Jesus and started doing fasting and prayer. Who sent you? Are you Jesus? I do deliver and finish now. Money I no see. Husband I no see. I don't know whether God is talking to somebody here. God's ways are not our ways. There is the right way. There is the wrong way. And there is God's way. Because I don't want to be wicked. Nigeria, tradition. We share your tradition. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Let him be your comforter. Don't listen to people. If I don't listen to tradition, don't listen to what people say. I cannot do this to my wife. In fact, it's an insult. My wife cannot call me by name. I cannot cook for my wife. I cannot. Stop lying. Is it in the Bible that you should not wash plates? Or you should not help your wife? The Bible does not say a man that cannot provide for his household. He said, anyone that cannot provide for his household is worse than infidel. Not, the, not a man, because men put it upon themselves that it is my duty. It's not your duty. Praise the Lord. He said, I am with you in pain and in happiness. You should let the comforter be what? The Holy Spirit. Don't let your comfort be from anybody. They will, they, most of them can advise wrongly, but the Holy Spirit can never advise wrongly. That's why I do a lot of stupid things. And people say this woman is stupid. But I am not stupid. Because most of the time, I make sure I go back to the Holy Spirit to ask him, what should I do? Praise the Lord. Then do the will of God. Try to do the will of God. John 14 verse 15 says, if my love, keep, if you love me, keep my commandments. Don't commit this. Don't do that. Don't do that. They are the commandments of God. Don't do them. If you don't do them, he will be with you in pain and in happiness. He will turn your pain to joy. Praise the Lord. Then finally, change your ways to please him. Change your ways to do what? Change your ways to please him. See, there's nothing outside there. Ah, enjoyment. There's no enjoyment outside. We've been there. We've been there and we are here. So nothing there. Nothing to enjoy. Nala. You don't have bambe. Ah, you have to enjoy. There's nothing enjoyment outside there. People that have enjoyed, they are regretting it. Praise the Lord. Change your ways to please Him. Second Corinthians seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven? You want him to be with you in that pain? Take pain out of your life. He said, if you can humble yourself and pray and turn away from your wicked ways. He said, we hear from heaven. He will forgive your sin and he will heal your land. He will heal you. He will take care of you. He will settle everything that concerns you. Because what? You have turned your ways to please God. Are you pleasing God the way you are living your life? Conclusion. Jesus you need Jesus with you to take away your pain. No other man. And make you happy. Yes, he can do it. You can ask, you ask me, can he do it? Yes, he can do it. He's our advocate. Pleading our case with the Father. But you need to do something. Ask me, what should I do? Rise up. No matter how dirty you are. No matter how far you have gone into the world. Ask Jesus for mercy. Ask him for forgiveness. He will plead your cause. All you need to do is come to him. Can we bow down our heads? All you need to do is come to him. He said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give rest to your soul. If you are here, you've heard the word of God, you want to come to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to him. You want him to plead your case. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. You want Jesus to plead your case. 
You want him to have mercy on you. You want him to be with you in your pain and turn your pains to happiness because you have come to him. Just wave your hand wherever you are so that I can pray with you. So that God himself will turn your pain to happiness. Is there anybody like that? Yeah, you want to surrender your life to Jesus? The rest of us, let us stand. Let's stand. Let's stand because my, my time has passed. I need to leave here now. If you are still here, you want to surrender your life to Jesus because I believe that every service we must ask for salvation of soul. Just lift up your hands wherever you are and say, Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you. If there's any, nobody there, you are going to say, Father, Father, over the secret of my life, don't keep me in darkness. Ask God not to keep you in darkness. Over the secret of your life, that thing you are going through, has God not to keep you in darkness. Father, over the problems of my life, the secret of my life, Father, do not keep me in darkness. Do not keep me in darkness. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. That thing, that situation, that thing I'm going through, whatever I'm going through, that is not, that will not allow me, oh Lord Almighty, to see your glory. Father Almighty, is it my lineage? Is it what I have done before? Is it anything? Father, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. Our Father and our God, we want to give all the praise because we have heard your word. That, O oh Lord Almighty, you can be with us in pain and in happiness. You are the only one that can grieve through happiness. Father, we return the glory to you in Jesus' name. Over the situation of our life, Father Almighty, do not keep us in darkness in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see where the source of our problem comes from in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. There's somebody here, you are going to have a dream this night. Don't take it lightly. Whatever you see, it's either you go to a man of God to pray with you or to narrate it, or you yourself go into fasting and prayer. Until that problem is solved, don't give up. And you will testify in Jesus' name. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.